Hey, thanks for joining me today. You're listening to The Sit Down with Roman Gray. Life is just one giant roller coaster with no seatbelt. It's filled with setbacks. We'll take two steps forward and then life will take us three steps back. It gets so frustrating when you work so hard for something and had a plan for it. And sometimes within minutes or even seconds, everything you worked so hard for is no longer possible no longer an option. The vision and hope you had are now done for. It's like, how many setbacks can I take before I'm allowed to lose my mind? Life just loves testing us. We always hear, if you fall down, get back up again. Right? You fall down seven times while you stand up eight times. Dealing with setbacks and failures are part of the human condition. No one ever promised us a life without pain, disappointment, or failure. It's the invisible contract that exists whether we like it or not. So when we do have these major setbacks or failures, what do we do? How do we go about it? I think that the first step to reframing and accepting failure is to just not be surprised by it. It's like we forget to consider that things could happen any other way besides the way we want them to happen. Accept failure. It's part of life. You won't always be right. You won't always be successful. Not everything you do will go the way you hope. And that's just something we all have to learn. Failure can be a moment to start over, to reevaluate, or probably the biggest thing of all, which is to learn to be patient and accept that things are out of your control, no matter how much you think you can do or control. For a lot of people, including myself, what really helped me overcome my struggle when dealing with failure, I contemplated my mortality. What does that mean? I mean realizing just how temporary, just how fleeting our lives are. Now, it's not meant to be sad or depressing. It actually does quite the opposite. Reminding yourself that death is inevitable leads you to live your life with truth and excitement. You have this hunger to absorb as much as you can in this life. You're filled with this fiery passion to have as many experiences as possible. Remembering that you're going to die no matter what puts a lot of things into perspective. Failure just disappears in the face of death. Death is a reminder to live according to you and your truth and your interests. Learning how to be okay with death sets you free from the chains of overthinking. Meditating on your mortality only feels depressing if you miss the point. It's a tool to create priority, meaning, value, and perspective. There was a quote I read that said, To practice death is to practice freedom. A man who has learned how to die has unlearned how to be a slave. Another thing is to change your perspective. Life exists outside of just our way of seeing the world. The way we see our failures and accomplishments are just one small side of perspective. There will always be more than one way to look at and interpret life. For instance, growing up, whenever anything bad happened or just didn't go the way I would have liked or planned, I would always play the victim. Like, oh me, oh my goodness, poor me, yada, 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 all that stuff. Thing is, so many of us do that nowadays because it's our first instinct. It's easier to be the victim than take control. At some point in my late teen years, I flipped the script. Instead of saying, why is this happening to me? I would say to myself, what is this teaching me? What lesson can I take away from this? 
It's such a simple and yet powerful way to change how you view mistakes. How you view your failures, setbacks, and even unwanted change. So the next time you do something and fail, before you get too hard on yourself, just take a couple big deep breaths and just ask yourself, what is this teaching me? What can I take away from this experience? Because we're so afraid to fail, we don't even really try. We tend to stick to things we already know because we think there's less risk of failure. We treat failure like it's the end of the line. Like, that's it. I messed up this one time. Well, you know, it's time to pack in the bags. We got we to gotta go. And failure is just, it's not that serious. Failure only sucks because we have an unhealthy relationship with it. We're addicted to good feelings. So anytime we feel anything negative, we're quick to jump to something we already know and what we're comfortable with so we can feel better. Making mistakes, failing, and having setbacks should be a relief, a reminder that you're human and that nothing is ever permanent or perfect. When we mess up, it's only a blip in time, not a life sentence. We're just traveling through time, learning what it means to be human. With that in mind, it helps me relax, knowing that because I'm still traveling, right? Because I'm still alive, because I can still breathe, I'm still learning, right? I'm not supposed to know everything right now. And it makes me curious about what else there is to learn. The issue comes when we try to pursue perfection in a world where so much is beyond our control. Our risk of failure is a product of expansion. It means we're trying new things, we're pushing ourselves, we're setting meaningful goals. It's time that we let failures be the motivation to do more meaningful things. It's when failure becomes an exercise in comparison that it's a dangerous place to be. Hey guys, I just want to take a moment to say thank you so much for listening. I appreciate it so much. Please don't forget to support me by visiting my website, itsromangray.com, as well as follow me on Twitter and Instagram at itsromangray. I love all of you so much just for being here and supporting me. It means everything. Thank you so much. And until next time.